left of the box. Federal panel lists 35 plausible future threats to Canada and the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Topping the list is the threat to society posed by disinformation and artificial intelligence. Now, it's just so funny that CBC would uh, acknowledge this disinformation part. <laughs> <laughs> Go back and watch. I have it clipped. I, I worked overnight to clip it as soon as I could. The hour and a half long clip of... Um, the Breach is a progressive media organization that is still fairly new. They're four years old, maybe, with a lot of really good progressive folks on it. And a former CBC employee actually uh, did a whistleblowing on the coverage, how biased the coverage is when it comes to uh, what is happening over in Gaza and the way that they're not allowed to use the word genocide or paint Palestinians in any sort of sympathetic light. Or mention the fact that, you know, there's slaughter and all that sort of stuff. It was always done from the perspective of, like, October 7th. And I got really snarky in that one, too. Because not only did the breach have this, but then CBC decided to release an article from, like, an editor's blog. Kind of combating it. Or, or um, what's the word, when they rebuttal or something? And in that rebuttal, I kid you not... In this sentence, he said, uh, CBC does not minimize what is happening over there. And we know the deaths of thousands of people is really bad type thing. And it's like, you did it right there. You mean to say the deaths of tens of thousands of people, not just thousands of innocent people. There's the tens of that. That's you just did the minimizing and he goes, sentence where you were trying to claim you weren't minimizing it clever yeah but you got caught. so i'm interested to see what they think <laughs> but this federal panel this is the the future threats to the world other than landlords not getting paid they have a huge landlord bias as well <laughs> not shocking so let's see in a news report, a think tank with Employment and Social Development Canada cites 35 plausible global disruptions that could reshape Canada and the world in the near future. The Policy Horizons Canada PHC panel drafted the list, then asked more than 500 stakeholders, already I'm skeptical when you say stakeholders, Seriously, within the outside government to suggest which ones were more likely when they might happen and how one might trigger others. Like this just sounds like, yeah, you got some rich people to say what they're scared of. Yeah. The authors of the report point out that the list is the exploration of theoretical, not guaranteed threats. They say that even seemingly distant or improbable calamities can become reality and thinking about them helps government create robust and resilient policies. You know, that actually just, okay, random thought. Well, not that random. You know, sometimes autistic brains will connect dots where other people don't. That just reminds me, okay, um, the guy who wrote Zombie Apocalypse Survival Guide, he was actually interviewed or brought onto panels and committees from the American army to help them kind of like think about actually how would we survive this? And it's not a matter of like, we think this is going to happen. It's like, okay, if this type of calamity where there's total anarchy, you have this ongoing threat, what are some of the things that could potentially happen? Basically the idea is if you're prepared for a zombie apocalypse, you can pretty much handle anything else. Um, <laughs> So that just made me think of this. Like, I don't think zombie apocalypse will happen, but if it does, I'd like to be prepared. That's a lot of what uh, the U.S. military does, actually. They mm -hmm. always, they're always preparing for, like, oh, if this segment of the population or, like, these people, like, rise up, how do we put them down? Yeah. Yeah, it's not usually done in the way that actually benefits a lot of people, just a certain class of people. Right. So uh, leading the report's top 10 list, those threats that could have the greatest impact and are most likely to happen is the threat to truth, says the CBC. <laughs> 
which which like that's the thing that we live in a day and age which where we have to say which truth are you talking about like the truth that is actually verifiably proven truth or the truth that like right wingers say conspiracy theories are you can't even say truth without having to clarify what you mean by it it's kind of like when i say i'm queer and then that doesn't really help narrow down what i mean it just kind of lets you know that i'm not heterosexual but it doesn't actually give you much more information and it's like truth okay so what is truth these days like it just the fact that it's even up for debate is really <sighs> i feel like to some extent like the word truth has been like weaponized by the right yeah. almost like they use that word so often that like well i mean i guess back in the day there was like the 9 11 truther you know the truther mm -hmm. thing but like that kind of died down but then i feel like the right definitely weaponized that word it's it's interesting like what happened when it comes to like the right like the right politically and then the conspiracy theory people like there was a divide between political and conspiracy at one point but i think the day that trump went on alex jones and was pretending like he was a 9-11 truther i think it was like that line got blurred and it was just like q anon after that you know well, it's just that we even have to have the argument about you know the flat earthers that there's so many of them now when it's like okay buddy if you really 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 think the earth is flat you can start a gofundme and there's enough of you conspiracy theories out there that you could easily fund that you know a lot of people with disposable cash that think this earth is flat so start that gofundme get the plane go fly to the edge of the earth and bring back a photo <laughs> like can well, you do that yeah. well their thing is not even like oh the earth's flat it's like the earth's flat and they're lying to us mm -hmm. and what else are they lying about yeah what are they hiding it's like why would we say the earth is round if it was flat like where where's the goal what's the purpose because they're hiding stuff in antarctica i i don't know <laughs> it's like some silliness i i unfortunately there's a lot of flat earthers in like the vegan community <laughs> no <laughs> i like yes like i you know i went to like some like vegan meetups or like whatever and there's some flat earthers in there mm -hmm. um and i had a friend who was a flat earther i think she got over it but um it was just like yeah if they could lie about that then they're lying about all this stuff and it just well, goes down some rabbit hole that usually generally has anti-semitism in there but here's where the problem really does apply is that one of the things that i was saying about cbc being so biased in its coverage on what's happening over in Gaza and the fact that if we didn't have social media, we wouldn't know the actual truth. So then what else have they been biased about that we simply don't know because it didn't make it to social media? Because it does, it does actually do that. Like how can you trust the credibility of the Canadian broadcaster, the publicly funded Canadian broadcaster when they are just so blatantly biased about a genocide people can see is happening right now in real time and so it does like that's the thing like once you believe it's possible that the government has lied to you about the earth being flat then yeah <laughs> the next logical thing would be what else have they been lying to us about well yeah and that's that's when it goes back to like the media literacy and things like mm -hmm. that you gotta like if you want to know what's going on in the world like you're not going to know from like reading the news you got to know history. You got to you got to like know what's going on in the world. Like you're going to have to read some books. You're going to have to have a background to like understand what's going on in the world now. And yeah, you're going to so that'll make you be able to like weed out the stuff that's not necessarily true because it will be things like that that are like like when you mention they said thousands instead of tens of thousands. It'll be subtle things like that. But if you're aware of what's gone on and then you are able to weed that out i like to read bbc uh news online but i can tell when they're lying you know or i can tell when they're like leaving stuff out or whatever that's okay 
for me like yeah like yeah it's like no i i know like okay that part is like whatever but if someone thinks that just by reading the current news that you're gonna know what's going on in the world no that's not mm -hmm. how it works yeah and that's something that i've been learning with canadian media too is that a lot of what they say isn't necessarily wrong but it's not exactly a full picture of what's been happening so it's really you have to read between the lines like oh um two died in an uh incident with the police so what you mean to say is that the police shot two people right you know you don't hear it that way it's just like yeah so some people didn't make it from this incident with the police for some reason we don't really know about <laughs> cbc is really bad when it comes to landlords and they cherry pick these stories of like oh look at this poor small landlord who only owns like 10 buildings and they have this one tenant that you know, tore up their apartment and wouldn't pay rent and they had troubles evicting them and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, that's not a small landlord. Also, they took the risk with the investment. They, it's a small business. It's a risk. Also, the amount of actual small family landlords out there who maybe like rent their basement because they need help with mortgage is such a minuscule percentage of the landlords out there. And the vast majority of landlords have all the power, have all the control, can raise the rates, do whatever they want, kick people out. Like when you go to the landlord and um, tenant board for any sort of ruling, 90% of the time it's in the landlord's favor. Like it's just, but CBC doesn't show you that side of it. They only show you, oh, these poor little landlords here who, who are warning other people that they shouldn't become landlords. Good. Yeah, good luck trying to get the population again, mm -hmm. like a pro landlord. <laughs> That's never going to happen. <laughs> uh, so let's see. PHC's report says that in as little as three years, the world's information ecosystem could be flooded with misinformation, disinformation created by both people and our artificial intelligence. And here's where we have a lot of problem with that media literacy and certain politicians that don't have any. Because there's been a lot of things that would get leaked. Well, not leaked. Put on Twitter that are completely false, that then politicians will pick up and act like it's truth. It is, like, this is why I'm having a harder time because I still use Twitter for my primary sourcing for information, but now it's like, okay, does this lead to an article? Can I back this up? Is this a trusted site that I go to? Like, is this person somebody that, generally speaking, tweets out accurate stuff? Like, it is, with the amount of AI, with the amount of deep fakes of like whenever you see a picture of something, unless I can go and find the original tweet, because that Brianna Wu uh, tweet that I saw was originally a, a image that was tweeted out. And so mm -hmm. I actually went to her Twitter profile to see it because there have been a lot of tweets from people with that image like, oh, look at this from Pierre Polyev or Justin Trudeau. And then you go to their site and it doesn't exist. Right. But then so many people will just go with it based on that. And there was one one that just blew up recently with some guy saying, here's this person who's, uh, whose daughter was kidnapped by Hamas and raped and all this sort of stuff and is now in support of, you know, calling Pal giving the ICC or something like that. And he was talking about, like, somebody in government. But then it turns everyone started questioning him on that and he's like no this is just a hypothetical <laughs> but if you look through the comments a lot of people didn't know that and there's yeah. a lot of things that people are being satirical like trying to be satirical and you have to read through the comments to know okay are they being satirical is this something they believe and then you see in the comments that no matter what the person posted there's people who believe it without any second thought yeah, well, that's why I don't do Twitter like that. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it warns that the algorithms designed to engage audience emotionally rather than factually uh, could increase distrust and social fragmentation, isolating people in separate realities shaped by their personal media. Public decision making could be compromised as institutions struggle to effectively communicate key messaging on education, public health, research and government information, the report says. To me, that just brings to mind the whole um, puberty blockers, hormone replacement therapy, policies being made on people's emotions versus here are the actual facts and science behind it. Like totally say, fine, this is good. It helps, it helps kids. It saves lives. But 
so many uh, truthers out there or people who want to claim that they know the truth are just compromising institutions. The biggest example of that is England, you know, with the Cassie, Casey report or whatever. Um, basically, yeah, sure. yeah, they're shutting down some of their um, public health or preventing trans kids from accessing health care needed for their transition because of the fact that there's been such pushback there that government officials have actually buckled and said, well, mm. maybe there isn't enough research into hormone blockers mm. and stuff of that sort, which is just, and then everyone pointing to saying, see, we're right. We're right. Because the government officials actually buckled to the pressure where it's like, no, that's never been the case. And one thing, here's a media literacy tip for anyone. Whenever the United States cites something outside of their country because they've cherry picked it to prove their point, you've got to know that they're they're effing with you. Because if the United <laughs> States had anything within their own country that would prove that point, they'd be using that. They only ever go outside of their own country when it's like, here's this cherry picked thing to show that we're right. <laughs> The rest of the time, they don't give a damn what's happening outside of their country. Ever. Uh, so, top 10 disruptions on the horizon, ranked by highest combination of likelihood and impact. Ooh, and it even has years until disruption could occur. So, one, people cannot tell what is true and what is not. That is a problem. Definitely. And you don't need to go years out. You, that's just right here. That's right now. Uh, Biodiversity. Biodiversity is lost and ecosystems collapse. And people think that is about seven years out. Well, Doug Ford keeps on paving over the uh, green belt and putting highways through it and selling off chunks to re real estateers, and uh, also planning on paving over part of Lake Ontario. I kid you not. Paving over it? Part of it, yeah. For um, th mm -hmm. It's a whole thing. I, I have videos on it. Taking a uh, former landmark called Ontario Place where people, family fun place that you could go. He He's lining the pockets of his buddies to convert that into a luxury spa where you literally can go and lie down on cushy couches to look at pictures of trees. Instead of, you know, caring about the trees that they're actually taking out of the ground for that. And part of this project is paving over part of the lake to make a parking lot. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And then there's the highway 413 to go through the green belt, which is not needed and studies have shown will not relieve congestion on the 401 whatsoever. But you know, those ecosystems, that farmland, that precious pristine farmland and clean drinking water, well, that's not making money for his buddies. Uh, so three, emergency response is overwhelmed. That's vague. Um, I mean, I guess like during COVID, there was like some of that mm -hmm. happening. Well, it depends on the severity of what it is, the longevity of what it is. Because like even down in Texas right now, there was a massive storm that just went through and there's still people without power. Yeah, that happens a lot. Uh -huh. And so when you have something like that, where maybe if you don't have fully, well, we're going. Another thing I've been covering closely is uh, the conservative provinces, Ontario and Alberta in particular, that have defunded or don't have their fire services, emergency fire services, fully staffed, going into wildfire season. So that I could definitely see emergency response being overwhelmed. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cyber attacks disable critical infrastructure. I mean, that's happened here and there, mm -hmm. but... There's a lot of security around that sort of thing, too, and... Both sides are growing at the same rate, I would think. For sure. Uh, billionaires run the world. Ooh, so CBC really didn't have much to say about this survey then, did they? I mean, like, too late. Yeah, that's also <laughs> a zero right here. <laughs> that's, just, that's, that's a now thing. Right. Uh, artificial intelligence runs wild. Do you know what? I'll just say it. It'd be nice if any intelligence runs wild right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not too afraid of that. <laughs> yeah. No, it'd be nice to just have any intelligence out there <laughs> influencing things. Right. Uh, vital natural resources are scarce. Uh, we're already there. Downwards uh, social mobility is the norm. They're having all these like five-year projections. It's like, no, this is a now thing. 
Right. Health care system collapse. That's a now thing. It's not. There are people in both Canada and the United States who aren't surviving that could survive if we had decent, decent health care systems. True. It's worse in the States. Like, you know, you guys are you're usually the worst at everything. <laughs> <laughs> but Canada is still. A uh, democratic system breakdown depends on who is elected in the next presidential election. <laughs> right. And we have our own issues up here in Canada, as I've talked about on length on my YouTube channel, Left of the Box. Um, there's a very strong probability that if Pierre Polyev gets into power, he's going to start using the notwithstanding clause, which is, um, there's nothing you can do about that. That the notwithstanding clause is put into pay, place to keep the superior courts nonpartisan. Like in case suddenly the superior courts became partisan in their rulings and stuff like that, the notwithstanding clause was put in place to override that. But so far, the only thing the notwithstanding clause has been used for on provincial levels is to take away people's rights. Hmm. So basically, a uh, prime example right now is in Saskatchewan with Scott Moe as premier. Uh, they did with their education where they were forcing teachers to either misgender their students or out them to their parents if they weren't comfortable going out to their parents. Um, and so that got challenged in the their Supreme Court because that's goes against the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in Canada. You can't do that. So then Scott Moe used the notwithstanding clause to say, I don't give a damn about their uh, rights. This will override it. And there's nothing that can be done for it for the next five years. They're put in place for five years. And so they can be enacted by or re-upped by the next government or not. But like that is the answer to a bad ruling. There's nothing that can be done to stop that. So with Pierre Polyev threatening to use it on a federal level, which hasn't been done before, um, right now he's just saying that, oh, it's only for bail reform and criminal justice that he wants to use it for. But he's also indicated that, you know, trans women shouldn't be allowed in women's spaces, that the right to uh, choose what happens to your body when it comes to abortion care access. Well, you know, abortion shouldn't be happening and all that sort of stuff. So the democracy that Canadians think we have, it's a lot more fragile than they think. Yeah, it's the same thing that happened here, too. There was a lot of things that people thought, like, I mean, I guess rights people took for granted. And um, yeah, it just takes the right person to get in office and they say, Screw that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so the second and third threats on the list, on top 10 list, are environmental, ecosystem collapse, yeah, yeah. In five to six years, uh, biodiversity uh, impacts, okay. AI can run the world, okay. So it's not telling us what the other 25 things are. Just kind of going into detail, but I don't need CBC to tell me <laughs> um, the mm -hmm. more details on that because I don't trust them. Mm -hmm. 